So what about the trials that do fit the criteria? Well, in 1965, Rose and colleagues published a study in which they randomly allocated 80 uh, subjects with established heart disease to uh, one of three groups, one eating the ordinary diet and two that replaced most of the traditional animal fats with either olive oil or corn oil. And they found that the group uh, that was eating the corn oil had about twice as many major cardiac events as the control group. And the statistical analysis uh, suggested that we can be 90 to 95% confident that this is a true effect of the corn oil, which is considered to not quite reach statistical significance, but approach it. They concluded that under the circumstances of this tri trial, corn oil cannot be recommended as a treatment of ischemic heart disease. It is most unlikely to be beneficial and it is possibly harmful. Is that a fair conclusion? Anyone disagree? Pretty fair? Okay. The Sydney Diet Heart Study was larger and it was a little bit longer. They took over 450 men with established heart disease and randomly allocated them to two diets, one that was their ordinary diet and one in which they decreased their saturated fat intake and increased their intake of vegetable oils rich in PUFA and followed them for two or seven years. They found that the high PUFA diet increased mortality by just under 40%. And if we look at the survival over time, we can see that the high PUFA group clearly has lower survival than the saturated fat group, and this is statistically significant. Now, if you were to say that something is bad in this study, what would you say it was? The PUFAs, right? Because they're killing people, right? Well, the researchers had a somewhat different conclusion. They concluded that men who have had myocardial infarction are not a good choice for testing the lipid hypothesis. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with the hypothesis, there must be something wrong with the data. There's nothing wrong with the PUFA, there must be something wrong with the men. St. Vincent's Hospital study provides a somewhat amusing scenario. They attempted to do a 10-year trial where they randomly allocated 100 men to consume a low-fat diet based either on peanut and coconut oil, so it was relatively high in saturated fat, or corn and safflower oil, so it was relatively high in PUFA. At the halfway mark, five years, they published this analysis showing that there were four deaths in the saturated fat group and five deaths in the PUFA group. Obviously, a difference of one death is not statistically significant. You can't really conclude anything from it. But if this study was supposed to be 10 years long, what would you want to know? The rest of the 10 years, right? Well, that is the one thing that we never found out from this study. I'll let them explain in their own words what they did at the 10-year mark. They said the low ratio of polyunsaturated to saturated fat in diet 2, meaning the peanut and coconut oil diet, was first intended, first intended to serve as the control for the study, since this pattern closely approximated that of the usual American diet. I emphasize the words first intended. Subsequently, a control group, a new control group, was matched to the diet groups already under study. So they could compare these diet groups to a new control group. We are fully aware that by continuing to study the original diet groups and comparing it to this new control group, we made it impossible to have a randomized controlled series. So they said, halfway through the study, they said, eh, we don't really like our control group. We're going to get a new control group. <laughs> Despite the continuation of the two dietary fat patterns, the data from the two dietary groups were combined <laughs> before comparison with the data from the control group, the new control group. So they, they pulled together the mortality data from the PUFA group and the saturated fat group together, and they compared it to this new control group they pulled out of thin air. And they concluded that uh, in the combined saturated fat PUFA groups, there was 17% lower mortality than in the new control group they pulled out of thin air. So they can conclude that being in their study was good for you. The one question that they couldn't answer was what was the difference in mortality between the two diet groups? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> So the British Medical Research Council trial uh, showed no difference substituting soy oil for traditional animal fats in just under 400 men with established heart disease that they followed for between 2 and 6.5 years. Uh, this study has a little bit uh, of a confounder in it in that 
the subjects in the control group ate what they would normally eat, but the, uh, the high PUFA group was directed to take at least half of the oil unheated, often drinking it with fruit juice. Uh, so it's possible that there was a difference in heat damage to the two diets, uh, but nevertheless, there was absolutely no effect of any treatment in this study. Two of the six studies that we're going to look at were double blind. This was the Minnesota Coronary Survey and the LA Veterans Administration Hospital study. And these had several advantages. They studied inpatients, in one case in a hospital and the other in a Veterans Administration residence home. So they were able to feed them diets and make the diets exactly the same, but just switch the oils that were used. And they could monitor compliance by collecting meal tickets. In one case, uh, tickets with barcodes, and in the other case, color-coded tickets, and then punch them in holes to indicate that the people had eaten the meal. In the Minnesota coronary survey, they found no effect of decreasing saturated fat and increasing PUFA. And a major advantage of this study was that they, it was, the population was very large, over 9,000 people, and half of them were female. This is the only study to include women in it. Uh, one of the major drawbacks was that the at, even though the study lasted for four years, people were coming in and going out because if their stay at the hospital was done, then they left and they were no longer in the study. So the average person was on the diet for only a year. And if we look at the uh, cardiovascular disease-free survival, we can see quite clearly that over time there's no difference in heart disease. And this graph seems kind of straightforward, but it's a little confusing. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, you, sh you see about four and a half years plotted. We have to remember that people are coming in and out of the study. So even as we go over time, the average at any point, the person's only on the diet for a year. The other thing is that the y-axis starts at around 80% instead of zero, so it makes it look like practically everyone's dying when in fact only about 20% of the people died. But if we look at total survival, we see something a little bit disturbing. Now, nothing on this graph is statistically significant, but after about a year and a half, meaning after some of the people had been on the diet for a year, we start to see this difference emerge where saturated fat uh, diet group has better survival than the PUFA group. Now, it's not statistically significant, but it makes us wonder, what would this have looked like if it was continued so that people were on the diet for more than a year? And that, the answer to that question is forever lost to us. But we can speculate about what would have happened by looking at the veterans, LA Veterans Administration Hospital study. And I believe that this is one of the most important uh, clinical trials ever conducted, and certainly the most important clinical trial that we'll look at today. And of course, it was one of the only two double-blind uh, PUFA studies, and it was the only trial where the mean age was over 60. Now, if the population's older, what, what disease does that allow us to look at besides heart disease? Cancer, right? So this is a really important cancer study. And it was also the longest trial, lasting a little over eight years, with most of the subjects followed for about six years. The design was they took just under 850 patients, and they randomly allocated to eat in one of two dining halls, giving them a color-coded ticket that dictated which dining hall they would eat at. And the two dining halls served the exact same food, but in one dining hall they ate butter and other animal fats, and in the other dining hall they restricted their eggs to one per day, and they substituted corn, soy, safflower, and cottonseed oils for the traditional animal fats. And if we look at this study superficially, it seems to suggest that there's some disease substitution going on where the PUFA diet protects against heart disease, which was statistically significantly lower, but causes disease mortality from other diseases because these were statistically significantly higher. And if we look at total mortality, we can see that there's no difference over time. There is one thing to note that at the very end of the study, we see this uh, difference seeming difference emerge where it seems like the PUFA group, uh, which is called the experimental group in these graphs, has lower survival, but we really can't tell the significance of this unless we were to see it continued on for a longer time. But we'll come back to this in a minute. Now, we have to ask the question, well, what diseases might be increasing in a high PUFA group to compensate for this apparent decrease in cardiovascular disease? And one such candidate might be cancer. And we can see by looking at the incidence of cancer over time that in the first two years of the study, there was no difference at all. After that, however, during two to five years, we see a difference emerging. And after five years, around five to eight years, we see this difference get bigger. So this indicates that vegetable oils cause cancer, 
but your study has to be at least a couple of years long and conducted in people old enough to get cancer in order to be able to detect it. Nevertheless, cancer was only about half, <coughs> half of the diseases from uh, causes other than heart disease. And if we look at the total non-cardiovascular mortality, we see that it, we don't see any difference for the first three years. The difference is very tiny for the first six years. And it's really after seven years that we start to see this massive fall off in the lives of the people consuming the PUFA group. And so this has to make us wonder do we really need to conduct a study for more than seven years to see all the harms of vegetable oils? So if we go back to the total mortality graph, that makes us wonder, maybe in, these, in this last part of the study there is something real going on. Maybe if we were to carry this out for nine or 10 or 11 years, we would see this difference in total mortality with the saturated fat group being protected. But it would be wrong for us to assume that disease substitution is the only thing going on because there were some confounders. Even though this was a randomized trial, the randomization failed to equally distribute smoking between the two groups such that the uh, saturated fat group had 60% more moderate smokers and twice as many heavy smokers as the vegetable oil group. And this came at the expense of light smoking and non-smoking. And the other difference was that the control group, the animal fat group, was very deficient in vitamin E. Unfortunately, it's difficult to say why because all they tell us was that they ate butter. They don't tell us what the compo other fats were in the diet. Very little detail about this diet. But animal experiments suggest that you need 0.6 milligrams of vitamin E for every gram of PUFA. And you can see that the PUFA group clearly came close to this goal, but, there was, uh, but the, the traditional animal fat group didn't even come anywhere near close to it. The vitamin E ratio to PUFA, vitamin E to PUFA ratio was three times higher in the PUFA group. Now, if you were eating butter, this wouldn't happen because the average vitamin E to PUFA ratio in butter is 0.76 milligrams. It exceeds the optimal ratio. Butter is a good source of vitamin E, even if it's not grass-fed. It's double the optimal ratio if it's fed grass. So grass-fed butter is a great source of vitamin E, but regular butter is a good, good source of vitamin E relative to PUFA anyway. So for some reason, there was vitamin E deficiency in the uh, control diet. That leads us to conclude that the effect of animal fat, cigarette smoking, and vitamin E deficiency cannot be distinguished from each other when we're looking at heart disease. So did PUFA protect against heart disease, or did vitamin E protect against heart disease? Did not smoking protect against heart disease? This is particularly ironic because that group that had fewer smokers, that had half as many uh, heavy smokers, is the one that had all the cancer. So we would have to conclude that long-term vegetable oil consumption may increase mortality from cancer and other causes, and that animal fat may protect against the adverse effects of cigarette smoking and vitamin E deficiency. And finally, that studies with a duration of fewer than seven years are not long enough to determine the true effects of vegetable oils. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of the investigators themselves. They said this small excess non-atherosclerotic mortality in the late years of the study raises the very important and difficult question of whether future clinical trials of diets rich in unsaturated fat must be planned for periods well in excess of eight years rather than for the five-year periods that have been the usual goal. I will emphasize this point once more. Future clinical trials of diets rich in unsaturated fat must be planned for periods well in excess of eight years. Please raise your hand if you have seen this study where they studied the effects of vegetable oils for well in excess of eight years. I don't see a hand raised, including my own. So overall, we can say that there is no evidence from these trials that substituting vegetable oils for animal fats reduces the risk of heart disease or saves lives. It may even do the opposite, as was shown in the ROSE trial in 1965 or the Sydney Diet Heart Study. And then finally, vegetable oils appear to promote cancer. Nevertheless, there are some unresolved questions that these clinical trials don't answer. What is the long-term effect of vegetable oils over 10 years or a lifetime? The LA Veterans Administration Hospital study would suggest it's probably not very good, but we don't know. What are the effects of vegetable oils when introduced into the diets of healthy, free-living youth instead of older people at risk for disease? Do vegetable oils with a balanced omega-3 to omega-6 ratio act differently than oils composed mostly of omega-6 fatty acids? None of these trials was designed to determine that. And finally, how do vegetable oils interact with other nutrients? 
are there some dietary contexts that make them beneficial or neutral and others that make them harmful? We don't know. But the question, of course, is, if we don't know, should we defer to the traditional diets of populations immune to heart disease and avoid them? Or should we make ourselves guinea pigs? Again, let's listen to what the LA Veterans Administration Hospital Study investigators said about the novelty of these high PUFA diets. The choice of experimental diet for the study, they said, did not reflect any conviction that is the ideal diet for prevention of atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease, or for that matter, that diet is the ultimate modality for this purpose. The composition of the experimental diet did not correspond to that of any population group that has been scrutinized. Populations subsisting on diets low in animal fat generally have a low total fat intake. In other words, traditional diets were either low in fat or they were high in animal fat. Now, is this true? What's, what's the obvious exception to this? Coconut, right? So what we can say is they were either low in fat or they were high in animal fat or saturated tropical plant oils. Now, why did they use this high PUFA diet then? Well, they said the, the alternative would have been a low-fat diet, right? But they said that a low-fat diet, although capable of depressing serum cholesterol concentrations, would be expected to have limited potential usefulness because a pilot study that they uh, conducted confirmed that a low-fat regimen was rejected with considerable resentment. <laughs> in other words, they were using this high PUFA diet to reduce serum cholesterol levels in a way that would be palatable and acceptable to people that were accustomed to eating a high-fat diet. Epidemiological studies, they went on to say, have provided little information about the incidence rates in populations habitually consuming large amounts of highly unsaturated fat. Why? Because they don't exist. Indeed, only one such population, the Burmese, is known to us to approach this characteristic. In other words, they scoured the literature for evidence all over the world from someone that eats this diet. And the closest thing that they could find was the population of Burma. They concluded that total longevity was not affected favorably. For this reason and because of the unresolved question concerning toxicity of the high PUFA diet, we consider our own trial, with or without the support of other unpublished data, to have fallen short of providing a definitive and final answer concerning dietary prevention of heart disease. If we do not have a definitive and final answer, should we make ourselves guinea pigs for these high PUFA oils? I don't think that anyone could have said it better than the late endocrinologist Broda Barnes in his 1976 book, Solve the Riddle of Heart Attacks, in which he stated that everyone should have the privilege of playing Russian roulette if it is desired, but it is only fair to have the warning that with the use of polyunsaturated fats, the gun probably contains live ammunition. <laughs>